Mary Mead, Annie here. Welcome to Monday on Pagan Perspective. We have an interesting topic this week which came to us from Jim Sim 3. And I think what I'll do, I don't usually like to read out the entire question that somebody sends because then we read it out five times a week and maybe you get a little tired of hearing it over and over. But I'm going to because when this first came in and Kara sent it to us, I I had to stop and think about what the question was really about. And I, I came to my own idea of what the question's about, and I certainly hope I am respecting the spirit in which it was asked, that I'm even answering the right question. But I found it very interesting, so I ended up answering a question that I found interesting. I'm just hoping that it is the question that our viewer asked. Now, the official words from our viewer were, I was wondering about something in your videos that you mentioned following a path. That's to say, that path has already been foretold, and yet the pagan path is not straightforward. First, there is the Brythonic and the Godelic branch, and then the North African, which is more classical in their sense. Then there's Sanders and Gardnerian, and now Obad and Native Tribal, and so on. But where do you think most Americans find their center stone? Where does it come from? Or has the path been fragmented beyond its findings? Is it just enough to be? I read the second half, and it might be because I've been in a conversation with someone near and dear to me in my coven about this concept of place and our path, indeed, our spiritual experience of the place. Jim Sim mentioned that a lot of the paths that we study have their roots in the British, the Celtic, the North African, say Egyptian, I would add Greek and Roman, and oh so many other different areas that are the origin of so many of these classic pagan paths that we are following. Now the we were talking about here, because the question is specifically about, is Americans. So we have for instance, my training was definitely based on Celtic paganism, but with a Greek pantheon, just the way of the way it morphed and the way it came to me. But the important thing is that all of those traditions that we studied that were supposedly our heritage were not of the land that we lived on. Now, my heritage when it comes to my family would be on one side Irish and on the other side Dutch not too much tied into, indigenously speaking, of the American land. The land, indeed, that I live on that is my home. So I, I interpreted Jim Sim's question to be that. We take on these studies, we take on these paths, these set ways, the givens, the things we are told, the actions that we take, honoring these traditions. These classical traditions, these historic traditions that are not of our land. And I'm guessing that was the, what the question was about, at least this second part of it, because he refers to the fact that where do the Americans then find their center stone? And I understand the question then to be, it's not our path. Most of us Americans are not indeed Americans. We are the result of those who came to the Americas, some of us, of course, will be indigenous and have blood ties and historic ties to the land. But most of us have a history only of a couple of hundred years. So our going back time, our historic the tracing of the roots of who we are, our family roots, and our tie to the land, is not of this place. It's of other places across the world from here. So I appreciate that. If indeed that is the question that's being raised by our viewer, I really appreciate it because I've recently been in discussions about that. About exactly how applicable is it that Americans, so many of us in the neo-pagan movement, are honoring traditions, rituals, philosophies, if not specific religions, and deities of lands which are not our own land. The person I was having this conversation with is English. And he's been here 10 years or so, I guess, maybe a couple more years than that. And we were talking about 
it made sense to him that he came up in a specific Wiccan tradition in London that tied into the land around that area, to the standing stones and the farmland and the history of that area. So the conversation we were having is, if I traveled to the place that he was raised, would I feel the same connection to the land? The land being the spirit which nurtures and feeds. Would I feel the same connection as he? My question to him was, well, here you are in America. And very specifically, here you are sitting in Delaware, of all places, in America. What do you feel? And he was talking about feeling not disconnected from the land, because he loves the land, but he didn't feel here what he felt in the land of his ancestors, and the land where he first learned to work magic with the elements around him. And we had some interesting conversations and some pretty debated conversations over this subject. So it's one that if this is indeed what Jim Sim was asking us, then it was fresh on my mind because I've been revisiting that in conversations with him recently. My thoughts on it were, I am indeed not genetically, not historically, of this place that I live in. I personally am. I was born near here. So I was born into this land. I know the land well, near where I live particularly. I know the land that my house sits on in my yard intimately, every aspect of its personality. But is there a difference between that and truly being of the land in the sense of being indigenous to it? So on one hand you could say, no, that your genetic Whatever that is that a certain tribe comes from the land and lives on the land and has that symbiotic relationship with the land for generations, and what does that create? And the gods and the relationship to the gods that are passed down from family member to family member through that history, is that more powerful than a relative newcomer? to the land, as I am. My family came in the 1600s, so by American standards, we are old timers when it comes to those who arrived from other shores. But would I have the same intimate relationship with the land as someone like him, who especially in his early pagan studies, was on the land of his ancestors, deeply tied to it by blood as well as by belief? I believed, and this is what I told him in the conversations we have, so I'm sharing it as my answer to this question, that Jimson asks, do we have a center stone? What, what connects us here in this place that really, historically, is not our home? Not the place that we grew from as people. I feel that if I were to travel to the sacred places, that my friend studied in and learned of and practiced ritual within, I may not know the specifics of the people who built those stones or the gods that were worshipped, but I truly believe that those of us who are intimately connected to nature, to the earth, are connect connected to it at a level which is inclusive of all those things which are unique to where we stand on it but also to the deeper, deeper flow of life on earth. I believe when he stood at his standing stones outside of London, in ritual opening up to the old ways, and contacting the old gods, and feeling the earth move beneath his feet, then when I stand here in my suburban backyard, feet on the ground, and open myself up, to what I conceive of in my relationship to the old gods and my intimate connection to the earth that I stand on, that it's like there is a taproot which is deep within the earth that reaches out to all who stand on it in adoration and respect and indeed worship and celebration. So Jim Sim's question about we practice traditions, many of us do, in fact almost all of us practice traditions that are not originally of this land. They were imported 
as we came to this country. And if we have a discussion about how applicable then is it that we are bringing these traditions from other cultures, other countries, to ours, how solid is that? My experience of it has been, it is the nature-based part of this which ties us all together. That standing on the earth and understanding your relationship to it is a bond no matter what continent you're standing on. And I think connects you to the same thing deep within the energy of the earth. It rises through you, you become one with it. Any place that you stand on the world. Jimson questioned, would the path then be fragmented? Yeah. I'm not going to deny that. I am an American Wiccan. No, I was trained by the first generation of Wiccans that came to the New York City area. So my original teachers were taught by the first English that were kind enough to come to America that passed the tradition on to those of us who were studying in my particular tradition. And we changed it the moment it arrived here. And I know by talking to English friends, the differences in how we practice and the way we do things, sometimes they seem immense and sometimes they are amazingly similar. When I compare my ways of doing things to my English friend, who was learning, albeit years later than I, but still learning the same tradition on the other side of the ocean, we are astounded at how pure it did arrive here in America, and how I practice so many things very much like he learned. We also have discovered there are a lot of differences. There is an American Wicca, there is no doubt about it, with differences in practice and structure. But that makes it perhaps more of this land and of the people who then celebrated it because the living, growing, spirit of paganism is, it evolves through time. Yes, it has ancient roots, but it constantly changed even in those ancient times to meet the needs of the people who were celebrating it. It's vital. It's not something that's stagnant and it was proclaimed as something which it then has to stay forever. It always changed and it continues to change. So I find that there is a very powerful feeling like indigenous spirituality that I see in my practice of American Wicca. When I visited all the different kinds of places throughout the United States, all the beautiful spiritual places throughout the United States, occasionally being able to honor ancient sites where old ones did come to celebrate, other times simply being in the beauty of our country, standing in the beauty and being overwhelmed by it, and at the same time feeling one with it, and practicing this tradition, relatively young tradition, even before it got here to the States, that then, in the first couple of t teachings where the first teacher initiated someone who then initiated the next someone, and by then it was already changing into something which match the energy and the needs and the unique personalities of those who were practicing it here in the United States. So, I won't say fragmented in the sense that changed drastically, but I will say it shifted to meet the needs and the nature of the people who were celebrating it here in America. And that's the healthy way that I do believe. That constant change, the shifting to meet the energy and the flow of what is amongst those who are celebrating it. We can debate the legitimacy of its ancient roots, but we can acknowledge in general it's old as time. This way that we celebrate honoring the land and our connection to it and to each other. And then we have these unique ways that we celebrate it. When I gather in field or forest here in the U.S., standing 
firm on the land which was not the land of my ancestors but it is my land and the land I know intimately and I believe knows me I believe I am tapping into the same energy that was tapped into in ancient times in northern Africa in more modern times as Wicca was being brought forth and developed in England I think I'm tapping into the same thing and I think it's beautiful that the teachings that came over that were taught to my teachers and passed on to me are still powerful powerful ways to celebrate for me and have an awful lot in common with my English friends from whence they came but also have their bits and pieces of American quirks you might say so the center stone to me because Jim Sim asks where do you think most Americans find their center stone it's the land it is the instinctual knowing that these things that we have been taught that have really come to us from other shores and started in other lands are as applicable here that we may be working with gods and deities that belong to another culture or indeed another time but their energy and who they are what they represent is as real in how we conceive of them in the modern world and in a new location in addition to in a new time as it could possibly be real and tangible the center stone to me is connecting to the same thing that humans have been connecting to for more years than we can possibly really truly grasp that's the power of it to me and Jim Sim ended with at the end of all that or is it just enough to be that's a beautiful phrase because it is just enough to be we can analyze this and wonder about the roots and how we are or are not indigenous to the land we are living on and is it the same as those who practiced who are of the land we can analyze it up one side or down the other but in the end it becomes what is the power of our connection to the land to the elements that surround us where we live to the spirit that flows throughout tribes of humans going way back that we are as much a part of even though we are no longer living on the lands of those ancestors just accepting that it is feeling that history move through us knowing we're not disconnected from it even though it is out of time and out of place if we don't overanalyze and we be with indeed as he says is it just enough to be absolutely it is enough to be and that being the power of that pure being that's probably probably the center stem that Jim Sam is asking about the power of being I wish you all mirth and reverence Mary Park.